I am in London with Celine Fleming for Empire Radio Magazine. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. How are you? I'm really good. We're kind good. of nice and intimate, nice mm -hmm. and cozy today. Very cozy. So tell me more about you. You are a singer and songwriter. Mm -hmm. Has singing and songwriting always been your dream since you were a child? Yes, okay. it's always been my dream. Um, I actually, I was thinking about this today. And um, I remember when me and my brother, we were sat in the, in the living room and the charts would come on, Top of the Pops, yeah. and I'd run into like the kitchen and grab the broom, and I'd literally <laughs> stand on the broom and then just be singing away, like most children do. I'll grab the hairbrush and, you know, pretend I was... Was your brother listening? Yeah, yeah. listening and, yeah, and causing problems, <laughs> as brothers do. <laughs> um, <laughs> you mentioned when you were growing up, who was your music idol? There's lots actually, there's quite a few. Because my mother, she played lots of different music from ska, like reggae, country and western, um, soul music, right. funk music. It's kind of endless, but one that actually sticks in my mind is George Benson. Oh. Yeah, and I remember it was on like uh, this, this cassette tape and it was blue with my mum's handwriting. And I just loved it constantly stealing her tapes one particular song 2020 vision you know what i knew that you know <laughs> i knew that and okay. the greatest love of all the greatest love of all it was beautiful do you want to sing a little bit Oof, you put me on the spot okay okay later thanks <laughs> okay talking about your music yeah. and your sound as you mentioned you were listening a lot when you were growing up so okay. your music actually reflects this because you're rooting you said into fu into funk into jazz into soul Mm -hmm. How did you develop your identity as an artist, musically? That's an easy question, but a difficult question because, as I say, I've, I've had so many influences mm -hmm. and it's just something that's organically Happened. grown. Yeah, it's kind of been a natural kind of progression with the kind of lowness that I've got and then the high, um, the high tones as well. Um, but yeah, just listening to lots of different music mm -hmm. And liking a lot of different music and sort of not having a stigma and sort of um, putting them together yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah do you know I'm really intrigued by your story because uh, you have f been featured on a lot of albums with different artists so mm -hmm. it's not just you you've been doing so much for other people and uh, amazing collaborations so tell Thank me more you. about these opportunities that your life has presented you I'm um, to do with the songwriting mm -hmm. for for other people yeah I Basically, um, people ask me, I get put forward um, to write songs. I mean, sometimes they, they hit and sometimes mm -hmm. they don't. But the, the whole process of songwriting, I just love, I love it. I, I, I love it. I can sit there all day. I do sit there all day. And um, not every day. <laughs> I do do it other days. Um, yeah, and I, I, I just love to songwrite, no matter who it's for. If it gets placed, if it doesn't get placed, um, it'll get used for something else, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a really, it's a really cool experience. And working with other people, mm -hmm. co-writing, collaborating, because something that you feel would work, somebody else will say, "Oh, actually, let's try it this way," and you're like, mm. "Oh yeah, it actually that works. really works. That really works." Yeah. What you actually on a practical level? I'm not a songwriter. You sit down, and then I um, drink tea. <laughs> If that's your um, drink of choice, mm -hmm. which is mine. Can I have some now? <laughs> really thirsty. Can we do that again? <laughs> um, what was the question? On a practical level, you sit down, mm -hmm. you're in your mood, yeah, and then you start. Yeah, and sometimes you have to be in the mood, I think, because um, there's, there's, there's times when you might feel that you don't really want to write today, but you have to. There's something that you have to do that you've said that you're going to do or there's like a deadline for something so that's that can be a little bit difficult right into spec but then it comes off eventually and you've been doing it for a while yeah 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 so it makes a difference when you're a little bit more jolly i'm gonna have my list in front of me because you have released with some amazing names in the music industry i'm just gonna mention them ministry of sound yeah, that was Freestyle cool. Records, mm -hmm. Lounge, Dio Funk, just to name a few. So first of all, congratulations. Thank you. How did you, how did you manage? Because I know you've done everything on your own. 
Yeah, um, I think it's just word of mouth mm -hmm. and getting to meet new people and then your name kind of gets circulated mm -hmm. and you, the opportunities, they arise mm -hmm. um, to do some, some really cool stuff and hopefully a lot more. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> that's what we're here for. Yeah. <laughs> and also, there's something that not a lot of people might know, but your name is associated with some incredible TV projects. Yeah. Because as a composer, you wrote for, let me read them, Grey's Anatomy, mm -hmm. Secret Diary of a Cool Girl, Law and Order. And once again, how did you manage and how do you feel to reach such an incredible audience? Well, this, these particular um, programs, lots of other programs, it's with them a company called Audio Network. Right. And they're fantastic, really, really fantastic. Um, a wide range of all kinds of different music yeah. um, for TV, film, Films. the whole the whole of the media. And I was fortunate enough to work with um, a couple of the songwriters there and composers. And we got together and we wrote some music and yeah, it, it got chosen. It gets, you know, played quite a bit, which is fantastic. But I don't watch too much TV, mm -hmm. so I don't really hear um, myself too much, but my friends will comment and say, I'm sure I've just heard you on some kind of random program. Do you remember, right, David? Do you remember the first time you heard the song? Yeah, I, yeah, I do actually. I, was, I think I was, I can't remember what I was cooking. I was cooking something. And I just started moving. I thought, oh, that's me. <laughs> I was like, oh. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah. So I was really pleased. And then a little smile comes on your face. So, and, yeah. and also, I'm a little bit emotional in saying that, <laughs> but you have performed for Quincy Jones. Yes. Tell me all about it. That was wonderful. That was such an amazing opportunity. Um, massive fan of him. Massive fan. Everything that is, is written. Um, as a producer and as a person to meet him and we hung out afterwards we oh. went to like this after party it was um yeah he's a really really cool guy and how did it um, the actual show mm. how did it happen well i got asked through oh. yeah i got asked to do it which was fantastic because it was a great lineup there was um beverly beverly knight yeah. nisha paris the, uh, yeah really really good lineup so to be a part of that was quite special and the event itself was yeah fantastic How old was and the all-star collective the band who supported everybody top top musicians how was Wonderful. him in real life fantastic uh, <laughs> <cool>. <laughs> let's yeah. talk now about your music mm -hmm. so your last project is called the river mm -hmm. and the album loveland tell yeah. me more about both yeah and um, loveland is an album that um, I co-wrote with a guy called Nick Van Gelder. Right. He's like the extra Meriquai drummer. He's done all kinds of things, very talented guy. Mm -hmm. And basically, I'm, the, I'm a lyricist and an arranger, mm -hmm. and he wrote the whole instrumentation, like the bass, the drums, the keys, mm -hmm. producing, engineering. Everything. Yeah, and it came out on the 2nd of February. Right. Yeah, 2nd of February. It came out and it's doing quite well. We're number one in the UK soul charts. Yep. Second week. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I stay there. Um, yeah. Really, really good album. Good album. Well you done. should go get it. <laughs> <laughs> and the rhythm is um, with a company called Broadsight. Right. Um, with some fantastic remixes. One from Daz IQ and Yuchikawa, I hope I said that right, and T-Roy himself. And that's just a kind of, um, it's a reflection of a couple of songs that, that I used to, well, that I do write and kind of, they put them together. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of back catalogue that I've got that I never kind of use or that's been released and, and he liked that particular tune and then we had all the remixes on there. So that's doing okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I kind of know you a little bit by now, but how are you in normal life, like in daily life? Can you not tell? No, exactly. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm, I'm a bubbly, bubbly person. Music's just everything to me. I love it. I live it. I breathe it. Um, and I'm really fortunate to come across people like yourself um, who are interested in people who are not signed. Yeah. And, you know, they they love what they do and they want a little bit of exposure and they just want to get out there 
and show what they yeah, but you deserve it. Day. Your music is okay. great. Your voice is fantastic. Thank you. Them, so definitely. Have you got any guilty pleasures? No. <laughs> Give me one. One. Oh. oh. It's, actually, it's not too guilty. Actually, mm. it's probably. I'd, I'd say sushi. Oh, I love sushi. Yeah, but I'm a bit greedy with sushi. <laughs> I eat a lot of sushi, like a lot. <laughs> no, seriously. Like, a, yeah, it's not good. So, guilty pleasures. What else? Let's stick with sushi. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me do some <laughs> Last question. What's next for you? What's next? Oh, I've got some really cool music. Mm. Yeah, some really good music coming, um, which is good, with a guy called Dimitris. Right. Um, that's a, it's like a soul, new soul, um, funky disco thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I'm quite excited about that. That's cool. Um, soul Funk Secret, SFS, um, which is kind of the same initials. There's an EP coming out in the summer. Same kind of vibes, a um, little bit more funk mm -hmm. orientated. Yeah. Perfect. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I am. So, yeah. it was fantastic meeting you. You too. <laughs> you too. And I wish you all the best for an amazing 2015. Thank you so much, Francesca. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, I'm Celine Fleming. Big shout out to Empire Radio Magazine. Remember, think global, not local. Log on to EmpireRadioMagazine.com for the latest news in arts, culture, and entertainment. Empire Radio Magazine. Think global, not local.